Today, I'm gonna to show you how to stabilize your footage in DaVinci Resolve 16. It's a lot easier than it used to be. Let's take a look. There is nothing I hate more than shaky footage when you don't want shaky footage. I mean, shaky footage can sometimes be okay, like in the, the war movies, like things like, I don't know, Saving Private Ryan, things where it's like really fast paced, it's supposed to be kind of dirty and grungy and you get that nice handheld look and you're really kind of in there, but you, that's not always a good thing. In fact, in most cases, shaky footage is just kind of a pain in the butt. And stabilizing footage in DaVinci Resolve used to kind of be a pain in the butt. You had to go to the color page and do all that stuff and you don't have to do that anymore. You can do it right from the edit page. It's amazing. Let's let's just dive in and take a look, shall we? All right, we are in the edit page in DaVinci Resolve. I've got a clip lined up and ready to go. And if we play back the original version of this clip, you'll notice that there is a lot of camera movement going on. We've got some little shakes, we've got some big movements, a bunch of stuff that we want to get rid of in order to have a nice smooth clip. Go back to the beginning of that clip, make sure that clip is selected and head over into our inspector. And if we scroll down in our inspector, you'll see the stabilization menu. If you don't see the stabilization menu, you just need to double click on it and that'll open and close it. And in that stabilization menu, there's a few things to pay attention to. First of all are the modes. DaVinci Resolve has three different modes of stabilization, perspective, similarity, and translation. These are just three different algorithms that DaVinci Resolve uses to analyze your footage and stabilize it correctly. Now, I'm not going to go into the differences between the three different modes of stabilization, but if you check out DaVinci Resolve's user manual, it breaks it down pretty nicely and it'll help you choose the right mode of stabilization. I will say that 99% of the time perspective is the right way to go for me at least, so I'm going to keep it on perspective for now. Moving on below the modes is your camera lock checkbox, and that is used if you maybe had a clip that should have been on a tripod, but instead you would used a uh, handheld. Maybe you didn't put it on tripod, maybe you didn't have one, I don't know, Store, just make up the story in your head. Either way, that is when you would use the camera lock because the camera is supposed to be locked off. This will zoom in your footage a lot more than keeping it unchecked. So be very careful when you're using this. Below camera lock is zoom and this is exactly what it sounds like. It's just telling DaVinci Resolve whether or not you want to zoom in the footage after you're done stabilizing. And that is really important. I'm gonna show you why in a second. In order to do that, I actually need to uncheck that box. Below the zoom option are cropping ratio, smooth, and strength. Now cropping ratio is exactly what it sounds like. It's telling DaVinci Resolve how much you want to zoom in on your footage after you're done stabilizing. Now, I will say this cropping ratio works in reverse. So the lower your cropping ratio, the more of a zoom you're going to get. And the higher your cropping ratio, the less zoom you're going to get. So keep that in mind when you're playing around with this. The low cropping ratio is smooth. And smooth kind of takes care of the bigger camera movements, but that also means that it's going to zoom in your footage a lot more. So again, there's a balance there. You got to play around with cropping ratio and smooth in order to kind of get a good balance and get a good looking clip. And then below smooth is strength and strength kind of takes care of a lot of those little camera movements, a lot of that shake. And that's usually I keep that all the way up at one because that's the biggest problem that I have. Now, right now, with the exception of that zoom checkbox, everything is in its default setting. So let's go ahead and click stabilize. And now if we play that back, you'll see we are stable, but the image is moving around in the frame a lot. You're getting a lot of these black bars around the edges and we need to get rid of those. And in order to do that, we're going to go ahead back into our inspector and we're going to click on zoom. Now, if we go back to the beginning of the clip, play it again, you'll see we're a lot more stable. There's still some of those bigger camera movements, but a lot of that shake is gone. We're not moving around in the frame. Everything looks pretty good, but I think it can look a lot better because our subject is so small in the frame, we can stand to zoom in a little bit more, which means I'm gonna play around with that smooth slider. And I actually think I could stand to crank that all the way up to one. Let's go ahead and click stabilize again. And if we go back to the beginning and play that back, we'll see our camera movement is almost, it's almost perfectly smooth and there's no warping around the edges or anything like that. This is just a really good looking clip, but let's go ahead and compare it 
to the original. Now, stabilizing your footage isn't just gonna make your footage look better, it's gonna make anything you do to your footage look better. Things like dynamic zoom. And if you wanna learn more about that, check out this video right here. And if you found this useful and you wanna learn more about video editing, camera gear, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next video. Go watch it now.